Hi guys, what you are listening to right now is the brand new Rode Video Micro version 2. It is boomed just out of frame because I am a professional. It is an update to the wildly successful original Rode Video Micro. And now this guy, they are still selling this one and he is now $50. And the new Rode Video Micro 2 is $79. Now is it worth it? Yep. So I think the best way to demonstrate a product is to use the product in the video. That is why you are listening to the Rode Video Micro 2 right now. Normally, I have the very expensive Rode NDG3 in the studio here, but this thing sounds so good, boomed just overhead. And if you want to know how I do that and run a cable to my camera, well, I guess I just told you. I run an extension cable to my camera. I have it here somewhere. Here is another one. Of course, I'm using the other one that is connected to my camera. I will put affiliate links in the description below because, you know, I need to get stinking rich. But that's what you want to do with any microphone. You want to get it as close to your yapper as possible. So get yourself an extension cable. And then I just have a cheap old mic stand. I got the idea from Curtis Judd. Cheap old mic stand boomed out in front of me. And that's why I sound so lovely. Besides, you know, my genetic gifts, my radio voice that just came with me since I've been a baby. But I will do some head-to-head -head comparisons with the original Rode Video Micro and the new version 2. I will also use the onboard mic on my ZV-E10 out in the streets so you can get an idea of what a little shotgun mic will get you when you're out and about in society. But uh, first, I want to thank Rode for sending this over. Like when this was announced, not this one, the Rode Video Micro 2 was announced, I was very excited. So I reached out to Rode and I asked, could you guys send one in with some comparison mics so that I can do some comparisons? And then they did like immediately. So great people over at Rode. I appreciate it. it Rode is what I use here in the studio. So uh, it is a great match for me to be able to test out these mics and tell you guys about them. Because like I said, I use the NTG3 here all the time. I also have the Rode NTG video mic and the original Rode video mic. I have a lot of Rode mics. Before we get into the head-to-head -head comparisons, let me tell you what comes in the box. So the mic itself is a new design, very much in line with all of their recent mics. The way that the capsule looks, it is different than the Rode Video Micro. However, it is the same length. So uh, even though it has more girth overall, that's a fun word, girth, it has more girth overall, it is still about the same footprint in terms of length. In fact, exactly the same footprint as the original video micro. Now it has this brand new mount at the back, which you may have noticed right away. This is what they're calling a helix isolation mount. And this thing is really great at the vibrations. It, it's just, it fits the micro to so snugly. And when you bounce up and down, the mic goes nowhere. So you're not going to get any of that handling noise or any of that self noise. At least it's going to be extremely limited compared to uh, the old mount. While the old mount did a good job, there was plenty of play for the mic to bounce around. It comes with a TRS to TRS connection for your camera and a TRS to TRRS connection cable. And that one will go to your phones or your tablets. It comes with a nice little foam windshield from Rode, just the basic one. And then the big furry windshield. I call it a windshield, not a dead cat because I have a cat and I love her very much. So just like the original micro, you just plug it in on the back there to the 3.5 millimeter port right into your camera and no batteries, no buttons, no anything to worry about. You just plug it in and it works. And that is so great to have for peace of mind. You don't have to charge your batteries all the time. My Rode Video Mic NTG, I always have to remember to keep that charged up. And I gotta tell you, that's a real pain in the butt. So to have something like this, I really, really like that. But none of the accessories or the features make any bit of difference if you don't like the way the microphone sounds. So why don't you go get yourself a set of headphones because that is the best way to listen to this. Just coming through with a speaker of whatever you're watching, an iPad, your phone, the TV, you won't be able to hear it as well. So if you get yourself a set of headphones, you will probably be able to hear the difference much, much better. And I'm going to compare the Video Micro 2 to the original and also my onboard camera mic outside in a little vlog test. Here we go. So this is just the onboard mic on the ZV-E10. This is actually a very good onboard mic compared to other cameras, but let's see how it does against the Rode. So this is the Rode Micro 2. How does this sound? Is it better? Is it fuller? It's pointing right at my old yapper here. So let's test it out. And this is the original Rode Micro. Does it sound any different than the new one? Different than the onboard mic? Who can tell? I can tell in the studio when I go back and I review this footage. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome. 
which is very. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome, which is very. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome, which is very. Now, did you hear that? I knew these two mics, the Video Micro Original and the two, would isolate my voice better than the on-camera mic, but I didn't think it would make that much of a difference. Like, I was only, you know, a few inches away from the camera, and the ZV-E10's onboard camera mic is quite good, so I was very impressed with the isolation from both, but I was also extremely impressed with the sound quality from the Micro 2. Like, this sounded really good, but this Micro 2 was so much more full and so much more rich. It had bass, made me sound like a big, strong, tough man, and I appreciate that, Rode. But let's do the test again here in a more controlled environment in Handsome Studios here. I'll just put up the original video mic versus the Rode. I'm not gonna do the on-camera mic because it, we've established that's nonsense. So uh, let's go. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome, which is very. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome, which is very. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome, which is very. Mark Bennett is as intelligent as he is handsome, which is very. So I have the preamps in the FX30 at level 9 for the Micro 2, and for the Micro 1 I had them at 11 to get them to be a bit closer, so obviously the Micro 2 is definitely a louder mic. Now once again, the Rode Video Micro 2 sounded much better to me, much more full and rich, and has a nice bit of low end. I found that the original mic was tinny compared to to the new version. So I would recommend highly, if you can swing the extra 30 bucks, go with the new Rode Video Micro 2. It is plenty good to be used as a studio mic as well as an outdoor vlogging mic. Now Rode has also been touting that this has better sound rejection from the sides and the back. So uh, let's do a test now, testing the sound rejection. Now let's do some sound rejection. I will do one note and then go back and forth to see if the mic blocks it out. La I have perfect pitch. Can't you tell? La Did I bother your dog? But now I'll talk about a couple of reasons you may not want to get the Rode Video Micro 2, and that is the size of it compared to some of the new cameras coming out. Even though it is so small, it's just there's nothing you can do about it. here. Here's the ZV-1F. This is a 20 millimeter uh, full frame equivalent lens, so it is extremely wide. So when you put the uh, windshield, the furry windshield on top here, it dips into the shot. So if you plan to buy this mic and use it outdoors, because you're going to want the furry windshield to use it outdoors, you can't use it with the ZV-1F. It is just going to dip into the shot if it is put in the cold shoe right there. Now, the uh, the ZV-1, the original ZV-1, it doesn't dip into the shot because the lens extends and protrudes when it is on. So uh, let me just turn it on here. So when it's here like this, it doesn't dip into the shot when it is mounted there on the hot shoe. There's a hot shoe on this one, there's a cold shoe on this one. I didn't get my terminology wrong. There's just no connectors on this one. That is, this is not a ZV-1F review. Anyway, and also the other Sony cameras. If you have a Sony ZV-E10 and that 11 millimeter lens, that is so small and wide. I don't have it here to test, but my fear is that this will also dip into there. So if anybody's out there and they can test that for me, leave in the comments below the ZV-E10 with the Sony 11 millimeter 1.8. Does the furry windshield dip into your frame? Let us all know and I will pin your comment if you're lucky. Now the other reason you might not want to pick up the Rode Video Mic 2 is Rode themselves. They have recently come out with the Rode Video Mic Go 2 and this overall might be the best bang for buck mic in the entire road lineup. You can also use that mic as a USB mic as well as a regular on-camera mic or phone or tablet mic and that makes that very versatile. It still has the same plug and play, no buttons, no dials, no batteries to worry about and it's a bit of a step up 
in quality, and that thing is only $99. So you compare that to the $79 Rode Video Micro 2, and you might think you should go with the other one. But the thing is, that $99 one is just the mic itself. It doesn't come with the furry windshield. So if you want to get that, you have to go up to about $130. And also you lose some of the compact size. While the video mic go to is quite small, nothing is as small as this little guy. The Rode Video Micro 2, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. This is going to be in the camera bag forever. I am never taking that out unless I'm taking it out to use it, to have a high quality microphone that's about this big that is rugged and sturdy and can take a bit of abuse and I can just have it with me and it's always ready to go with the no batteries and being this big. I love it and I love the way it sounds and that's why as my backup mic in my camera bag it will be this guy and not the Rode Go 2. But if you are looking for a more affordable studio mic then I would strongly look at the Rode Video Mic Go 2. In fact I'm going to do a video about the best mics you can use that are the 3.5 millimeter ones that plug right in to your camera and uh, best value for you. I'll do that in an upcoming video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Why haven't you already subscribed to this? But don't forget that they are not discontinuing the Rode Video Micro. So if you do want the most budget mic that you can get that sounds pretty good, then, uh, you know, this guy still available. $49 right now at B&H. That's not bad. So once again, thanks to Rode for sending these things out so quickly for review. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys appreciate it too. I hope this helped you in some way. Write down below what is your mic of choice. Do you boom a mic? Do you put it on camera? Do you use a lav? Let me know down below. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.